Well, I just relearned a lesson I already knew. Never agree to be the second speaker behind Rob Pritchard. <laughs> Chancellor, President, faculty, and staff, graduates, and honored guests. And when I say honored guests, particularly my friends who have made an extraordinary effort to be here with us today, I thank you all for that. It, 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 it is very, very touching for me to see you here. Thank you. Thank you for the distinguished honor you've given to me and for the citation that was far too generous. I accept this honorary doctorate with a great deal of pride and much deserved humility. The humility for reasons too numerous to tell you. The pride because I am and will always remain a son or at least a stepson of Toronto. It has been here for 40 years that I've worked with my team to create Onyx. It's here that my family grew up and matured, and my daughter who's with us today. It's Toronto that provided the fertile soil for me as an entrepreneur to reach for my dreams. The University of Toronto has a very special place in my heart. As you heard from Rob, I enjoyed 10 wonderful years on the Board of Governors and several years on the Executive Committee and was fortunate enough to serve on the search committee that found and appointed one of our greatest presidents of the University of Toronto, Rob Pritchard. And so today's honor has extraordinary meaning for me and I thank you. I thank you for that very special thought. As I was thinking about speaking to you today, I wondered how I might, in the short time allotted to me, convey advice about lessons learned in a lifetime. This dilemma reminded me of the one that faced a friend of the great George Bernard Shaw. He supposedly asked Shaw, how could he possibly be expected to tell what he knew on his subject in just 20 minutes? Shaw replied, speak slowly. <laughs> now, I, I see concern in the audience, but don't be concerned. Let me assure you, I have not been allotted 20 minutes. <laughs> in the few minutes that I do have, I'd like to tell you a couple of stories that I hope will convey something worthy of your consideration. The first story illustrates that a successful career doesn't have to follow a straight line, that you can afford to make choices that turn out to be serious mistakes, and time will let you correct the, tra the trajectory that you want to be on. I enrolled in business school hoping it would lead to a, a, a career on Wall Street, be a stepping stone to Wall Street. I took pretty much all the right courses, did the interviewing, and by the time of graduation, I had job offers from some of the leading firms on Wall Street. But a month earlier, I had agreed to go to work for a Florida land sales company. Why? In addition to the fact that I was enormously greedy and shouldn't have been and learned a lesson from that, why? because I was offered so many options on the company's stock and it was a fast rising stock, I thought I'd make a lot of money and then maybe in five years, I'd go to and end up on Wall Street. By that September, I didn't like the way the company's land purchasers were being treated. I had little respect for my colleagues and the so-valued stock price was falling instead of rising. I quit and started calling the Wall Street firms that had offered me these wonderful jobs, job opportunities, just six months earlier. Those doors were universally closed. The firms had already hired everybody they wanted from that year, and I was out in the cold, no job, 
living in the wrong place, can't figure out how to move forward. That wrong career choice cost me time and was plenty painful. I didn't co-found CanWest until I was 35, and I didn't start Onyx until I was 43. Still, all in all, when I look back on it, what was Florida? Just a detour. So please remember this. A successful career does not have to follow a direct path. You can afford to try things, even if they turn out to be serious mistakes. Life is a long journey with plenty of time to adjust. My second story illustrates the best advice I can give to you graduates. Identify something that you just love to do and find a way to work in that field. If you do, you're more likely to achieve your goals and you'll be thrilled to go into work every day. Three years ago, my nephew, who lived in Washington, D.C., came to see me to ask for some career advice. He was always a great kid in our family. He was one of those first in, last out people. He graduated college and went to work at 22 for the Washington Post. Do I hear some complaint? <laughs> <laughs> He went to work for the Washington Post on the night shift producing the newspaper. Two years later, he was promoted to the day shift producing the newspaper. Well, let me fast forward. At 33 years old, he was the second most senior employee at the Post. But he told me that he wasn't fulfilled. fulfilled. He felt empty about his work. I asked him to tell me, what are you truly passionate about? What do you just love? And he kind of stumbled around, and he said, well, I'm not, I don't really love anything. There's nothing I'm passionate about except baseball. And I said, as you could expect, I said, well, then get a job or buy a company that makes baseball mitts or baseball uh, gloves or baseball bats or buy a team. He kind of, in the end, I like this idea. But he said, look, I couldn't swing it. I couldn't possibly buy a team. I said, okay, so buy a minor league team. You could see the light bulbs turn on in his eyes. <laughs> I'll buy a minor league team. Well, fast forward again. He bought the Akron, Ohio AA minor league team. He cut his salary to 20% of what he was earning at the post. He moved to this small town of Akron, and he worked around the clock, or at least it seemed he did, because I got emails from him around the clock. His team has gone from last in league attendance to the top. And last year, he bought his second team, the Jacksonville Suns. He is the happiest person at work that I may have ever met. I could tell you other personal stories and some life lessons that came from them. But instead of that, let me just leave you with this thought. I truly, truly envy you. The world's changing fast and for the better. Technology is changing everything. It's as though you were new graduates at the start of the Industrial Revolution. The wind is at and will be at your backs. So enjoy all that you've already accomplished and participate fearlessly and with passion in your futures. Thank you for this great honor. <laughs>